guys, hopefully I'm live. Um, this is all a new setup. I'm sorry I am um, two minutes late. I've been trying to get all of this sorted today. Hopefully this is gonna work. So I've had a little um, tuition from Kitty. I'm just gonna move this quickly because I need to see your comments. How do I do that again? Right, I've got you. Good morning, Ruth. Hi, Miranda. Hi, Helen. It's working, yay. Um, we've got some amazing bracelets to show you today. I'm gonna be doing some crystal macrame. And if I go a bit fancy like Kitty does, oh, there we go, here I am. Um, this is what we're doing today. So amazing crystal macrame, multiple strands uh, with the most stunning effect. So it's quite a big bracelet. We only need one strand of beads. Um, just so that you know, we have some amazing bundles today. Now, I hope everyone can hear me okay. Um, just let me know that the setup is good. I think we're okay. It all looks okay from my end, but just let me know. Um, so we've got some amazing bundles. We've actually put together three colors so that if you just want to make um, a few bracelets rather than mass mass makes, um, then you can do that today for around about 10 pounds. So you'll get your pink crystals, beautiful soft baby pink, uh, of which you'll get two strands. You've also got the gorgeous cord. So it's all of our Rattel cords. You get 10 meters on a hank. You'll get that in the matching pink. The one that I'm gonna to use today are the beautiful crystals that have um, an, a sort of iris finish to them. Um, they have an AB finish and they're absolutely gorgeous. I've put those together, I've teamed them with the cream. And then we also have the silver crystal rondelles. Now these are six by eight crystals. Uh, so they're a great size as well. Um, and you'll also get your silver cord with this. So huge big bundle, but that's actually our small one. Um, we do also have the huge big bundle, which um, is a uh, big bundle of your crystals, uh, which is normally 25 pound. That is on offer. Um, you might have already seen that actually. Um, so some of you who have been watching for a while might already have it. And then we've also got our rat tail bundles. Um, and remember, you're getting 10 meters on each of those hanks. So lots and lots and lots. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna say good morning before we get started. Uh, good morning, Camille. She says it's working all fine, yay. Good morning, Margaret. Hi, Janet. Good morning to Sarah and everyone from Scotland. Good morning, Janet. Uh, good morning, Sue. Hi, Alison. Lovely to see you the other day, Alison. Uh, good morning, Betty. Hi, Marie. Lucy says this looks lovely. I really like this bracelet and I have to say, um, it's super simple to make as well. You know I love macrame, I do love my knots, um, but this is a very simple one. So to get set up, um, you've probably seen in the previous macrame demos that I have been doing, um, you've probably seen that um, I always use a box lid and that's all I've got here, my box lid. I've cut three lengths of my cord and that's the length of my bracelet plus a little bit. Um, and I've put that just with a little bit of tape up on top. And then I'm gonna take all three cords. This is gonna be the main spine that runs through our bracelet. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna show you the whole thing beginning to end today. We did um, a lovely long make yesterday with our summer roses. Um, and really enjoyed it. So I thought we'll do a bit of a longer one today as well. So uh, what I've done, just a little bit of preparation work on the very ends of my cord. I've just run through a little bit of clear nail polish. You could do this um, with glue. Just take your scissors and point that to a really nice needle-like point. And I'm gonna do this with all three of them. Now the purpose of using the nail polish, or of course you could use a glue. The purpose of doing it is so that my cord won't fray while I am threading everything on. Hi, good morning, Marie, Paula, Miranda, Sheila, good morning, everyone. Um, I've seen that Kitty is on here as well, so she'll be answering any of your questions, because um, it's a bit overwhelming having all the multiple screens, making, answering, so it's really nice that um, we're there uh, during each other's lives so that we can keep an eye on everything. Now, I'm gonna thread these on. The purpose of doing the glue or the nail polish, whatever you prefer, is so that the ends won't fray. So you can see I've got a really nice sharp needle-like point on here now, and my beads are just gonna thread on absolutely perfectly. So I'm gonna go with, I'm gonna do a bit of a smaller bracelet today. You will get a bracelet um, out of just one of your strands of beads. So if you're going for the big multi-bundle, which is about 10 strands, you're gonna be able to make so many. Sorry, I'm a bit croaky this morning, so I'm just gonna keep on sipping my tea. 
Um, okay, so I'm going to go for, mm -hmm, let's go for 13 on our right strand. Now just double check up at the top that um, you're working on the right strand. So I'm going to go right, middle and left. The middle needs to have one extra bead on it. So on my right strand, I'm going to go for 11. So um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. If I just sit them all out, then I don't have to count while I'm talking to you, do I? Is that right? 1, 2, 3, 4. Fine. Um, so I really hope you enjoyed the beaded roses yesterday. It was great fun to do. The colours in the kit are absolutely beautiful. Um, by the sounds of it, you're all going to go and uh, give it a go. So hopefully... We'll see lots of um, your pictures in our groups. Um, who'd have thought you'd all did it solo for so many weeks? I know, it's mad. It's really great that we've got um, that we've got everybody answering everything all at the same time, which is great. I think I think Kitty has been on every single one of mine. I have missed a few. Obviously, we've been doing up the house, and normally, if Kitty's doing. Um, the Facebook lives here it's normally because I'm on telly as well that's kind of how we split it around the schedule um, so obviously if I'm in the studios I can't be answering um, but I try to get on for as many as I can now we did uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 let's do 12 13 14 15 let's go 15 on the outside which means I'm going to go 16 in the middle and you'll see because I've prepared the cord and prepped it um, I like to use the clear nail polish because it doesn't really affect the cord at all lighter ones are always a little bit easier when you're working with darker ones if they get wet or they soak up a glue then uh, that tends to affect the color sometimes it can go a little bit darker what do we do on that on 15 so we'll do 16 on this one I just wanted you to see, I could have pre-prepared all of this, but I want you to see the whole thing beginning to end because this is exactly what you're going to be doing when you get these kits at home. Um, Marie saying, good morning to our beady family. Lorna says, I'm on mask making duty. Hubby back to work now. Yeah, my dad sent a picture actually this morning. He um, He's back at work now in the office just one day a week. The rest of the time he's working from home. He said, it's very strange, but we're all getting back to a bit of a a new normal aren't we so best of luck for your husband tomorrow lawn i hope he stays safe uh, good morning joe good morning natalie um i love uh, that we've got uh, some familiar faces but if you are watching for the first time or you don't normally give a little comment just give us a little wave let us know you're there or maybe where you're watching from as well we had international beading yesterday had people from all over um, and i hope you're finding the new camera angles okay as well um, it's such a great setup. I think it's really nice to be able to see, hopefully, as close as we can get. Now, when um, I'm just going to prep my last cord. So remember, we've got 15 on the outside, 16 in the middle. Just always double check that you are threading onto the right one. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Because um, when we start in a minute, one, two. I always doubt myself when I'm talking and counting. It's never a good combination. Uh, when we start, you can see that you need a longer amount of beads in the very middle because we just have one poking out at the top and the bottom. It's just going to give us a really nice uh, graduation. Hi, Walder. Good morning, Walder from South Africa. Hello. Oh, I hope you're keeping safe over there. Hope you're doing okay. And says, I've been inspired by all your videos and I haven't yet done macrame since I was at school. This, I think, is um, a, it's such a traditional technique. It's a bit like kumihimo and braiding. You know, it's been around for so long. And I think every now and again, it's just so nice to put a modern twist on it. You know, fit it into our sort of jewellery trends that we have uh, these days. I love a bit of micro macrame as well. Kitty and I have been talking about materials over the last couple of days um, and sourcing some for some micro macrame as well so that uh, will be coming i know you have loved your macrame we loved the uh, cat's eye leather wrap bracelet um, that's a very traditional technique as well sort of uh, wrapping onto leather cords using your needle and thread so sometimes it's really nice to put a nice modern twist on uh, some very traditional materials uh, did any of you get your cat's eye bracelets have you been using those gorgeous cat's eye beads they're really lovely okay now the not so glamorous tape 
really shouldn't use my teeth, but it's just a quickie. Okay, so we're going to separate these out and I'm going to leave a little gap down at the bottom. Now, if you are using your macrame board, then you would leave um, at least one notch in between each of them. Now, as you know, I'm just quite happy using my little box lid. Works for me. And um, it's because I like the tightrope centre that I can get. So I'm just going to set this up and then I can show you. So can you see I've got the um, gaps in between at the bottom, but because I have this set up on my box lid, I've got this whole workable area all the way around. Oh, Camille's saying she did a cat's eye bracelet yesterday. Lovely, hope you enjoyed. Um, Diane's saying what gorgeous colours these crystals are, I know, aren't they? This is why I picked these ones, because I thought they are gonna go with absolutely everything. Okay, so our centre cord. We're gonna need a little bit more than we usually would because obviously we are doing a triple row. Now, Earl got hold of this a minute ago. Look at the state of this. It was hanging off my desk and he thought, sometimes I swear, he thinks he's a cat. Um, he actually sits, when I'm sat in the living room, he sits on the back of the sofa, kind of peering over your arm, um, over your shoulder, uh, which is funny. I think he thinks he's a cat and he sits like on the windowsill looking at everyone going past. So yeah, he got hold of my threads just before I went live. Nightmare. Okay, so I've got just over two, two arm spans, two very generous arm spans, and that's going to be enough for me to go with. So halving it, so half of my cord, I'm going to move this down a little bit so we can see the top and putting that underneath the middle. So I've now got an arm span on either side. And our first knot is always a little bit trickier because you've got nothing to hold on to. Susan says, hi from West London. I make tattered jewelry. Oh my goodness, I would love to try this uh, with beads. So think macrame will be right up my street. You're right, Susan, it would. Um, and tatting is the very old form of making lace, isn't it? Um, which I think is absolutely beautiful. I've been desperate to give that a go over the years and I've never quite got there. Um, Kitty's just putting up the link to everything uh, for today. Oh, Marie says, I love tatting, but not done it for a long while. Yeah, um, Kitty also, I'm sure she won't mind me saying, uh, gave me a little sneak peek of some crocheting that she's been doing with beads, so crocheted jewellery. And I think that will be right up your street as well. Very similar. Okay, so half my cord in the very middle. I'm quite high up at the top here because I'm using my board horizontally, so I've got the shorter lengths. And I'm just gonna take my left hand cord, place that over the middle, and can you see you, you basically make a number four. And then I'm gonna take my right cord, place it over the one I've just placed, underneath those center cords and up into that circle. And for your first one, like I said, it's a little bit harder. Um, it's a little bit harder because you just need to keep your position and keep half of your cord so that you've got even amounts on either side. Now that is half of our square knot. So to when we were doing macrame with our big crystal pendants, we did a lovely twisted rope. To keep on creating a twist in your macrame, you would always use one side. To counterbalance that twist, we do a half and a half. So this is half our square knot using my left cord. And now to balance it out and keep it straight, I'm gonna start with my right. So I'll take my right, create that backwards four. And I know lots of you say that um, it's your P's and Q's. So this one obviously um, is entirely up to you. Whatever you see it as is the best way to do it. So I do it as a backward four. Uh, Diane's asking what colour crystal I'm using. Um, I'm not sure what the official name is. I'll, I'll leave that one to Kitty because I'll just guess. It's just a really pretty one. Um, and um, hopefully um, Kitty will link that through. But it's in, it's in our smaller bundle and it's also in our larger bundle for today as well. So that's my one square knot. Now I'm going to see if I can get a bit fancy. Let's see if I can zoom in on this for you. Oh yeah, look at this. Okay, can you see this little loop that you get on top of your knot? That is how you count the amount of knots that you have on one side, okay? So I'll show you again in a moment, nice and close, but I'm gonna do six of these knots to begin with, okay? So that's my one. So crossing over from my left, underneath, up into that circle, pulling those cords through, that's my half and reversing it, right cord first, underneath and through, 
and now that's knot number two and you can see again you get that lovely little loop now it also means whatever side that loop is on is the side of the cord that you start working with next and I know lots of you will put a little knot at the end of one cord that's how you always know what cord to use some of you put a different colored bead underneath it as you can see you can get into a rhythm really quickly whatever works for you I just use my little uh, knots as a visual so I know whatever side this little loop is on is the next one so I've got one two three four I'm gonna do six just because it gives me a nice little even finish so we'll just keep on going until we have the right amount now as you can see I've got all three of my cords in the middle and I'm just working with all of them as one spine now that we've got our starter knots done we'll separate them out and start introducing our beads so one two three four five six of my knots now before I position the first bead I'm just going to bring my cord underneath my first left like so and also underneath my first right like so and I'm going to bring these in and now that has basically given me a setup so that my cords are surrounding my middle cord and I can ignore the ones on the outside and that's because I'm going to bring up a bead introduce my first bead and now I'm going to knot just as if it isn't there so I'm going to take my cord but I'm only going to use that center spine that's the only one we're going to work with here up and over the top taking my right cord and placing it over this one and we'll go underneath the middle and up into that circle that we created. So completely ignoring the outside edges. Naughty. And what that will do is give me a knot all around this first bead. So bring it up as high as it will go and I'm gonna tie this off and that is half of a square knot, that's all we need and that's going to secure that first bead into place. So you'll see there's not much of a gap up at the top. You can squeeze that up. Tension's really important with these because you want it to look as neat as possible. And that will give you that beautiful effect and it's worth getting your tension right all the way through because it's going to give you the nicest finish. Now we're ready to attach our bead on the left. So I'm going to bring up a bead onto the left cord and I'm going to take this cord. Now I'm only going to work on my left spine, ignoring the rest. So I've brought up the bead. I'm gonna bring my rope up and over the outside, go underneath just my left cord and into the circle that we've created. And I'm gonna allow that cord to now sit on the right-hand side of the bead, so it's gonna go onto the inside, and I'm just gonna pull it tight, like so, okay? And we'll do exactly the same on the right. Bring your bead up to the right, Take your right cord, place it over the middle, underneath, only the right cord, underneath and into this circle. And again, when you pull it tight, this cord won't sit on the outside of the bead, it's gonna to want to go into the middle. And then I'm just gonna pull this nice and tightly and I found that um, your tension here is really important. I actually undid the bracelet three times when I was making this on uh, Sunday yesterday because I just kept on playing around with the tension. Um, so as you can see now, it's got a cord on both sides and we are back to the middle, which means we'll introduce our middle bead and do exactly the same thing again. So now we are back to pattern repeat. That's the process we'll do for the middle, the left and the right. So into the middle, we'll do our normal knot. So over the middle, underneath and up into the circle, only working around that center spine. That's our half hitch knot. And it's worth taking your time here. Can you see now how I've got that set up lovely? As you add more beads, it will just sit neater and neater and better each time. So now I've done that middle, I'm gonna bring up the left. And remember now we're only gonna work with the left. Hook it over the middle, underneath, up into that circle, pulling that cord into the center. We'll get him out of the way. Up on the right, over the middle, underneath the right and up into that center. And this cord is so beautiful to work with. Remember, you're gonna get 10 meters on a hank. So you've got lots and lots to play with. Again, now my cords are in the center, bringing up that middle bead, and we'll just do our normal knot. And this is why I find having 
obviously the right materials are gonna give you the best finish. Uh, so using this cord is just so perfect to work with. It's um, slippy whilst being able to hold its shape, which is great. That's exactly what we need for this technique. Um, and also having it set up on my board, I just find it so much easier because everything is so accessible. It's um, simple to work with. It gives you all that working space and you don't have to battle uh, with the cords and the beads on a board. The macrame boards are great uh, for certain designs. Others, I just find it so much easier to work with um, a box lid. No airs and graces with me. You don't always need fancy tools. Okay, so we're just gonna do this for a little while longer, just so you can see it grow. And then I'm gonna show you how to do your clasp. So can you see it's housing each one of these beads with a lovely little wrapped cord around each of them. And once it's on your skin, it's just gonna have the most beautiful sparkle whilst you have this lovely web of detail through the center. Um, so again, pattern repeat. Very often you find with your jewelry, that it's just repeating a few very simple steps and you will just find that your tension gets better. And at the end of the day, if you struggle with this for your first couple, you can just undo your knots. It's very simple to do, just wiggle your bead and you'll loosen off that cord. So if any of it goes wrong, um, yesterday what I found I kept on doing, and I'll show you in a minute, um, I couldn't figure out why it didn't quite look right. Um, and I was distracted, I was a bit tired and I was, you know, getting along with a load of other jobs at the same time, as you do, multitasking. And I just thought it's not quite sitting right. And what I found I was doing was bringing my left cord over like so. And I would bring this one on top, go underneath and bring it through. And then when I got to my right cord, I found that I was going underneath and bringing it up and through. So just make sure that you've got um, the same pattern on both sides, your left and your right, and it will give you um, a beautiful finish. Now, I'm not sure where my comments have gone. Let me have a look. Hopefully I haven't missed too many. I'm sure Kitty will be answering for you as well. Um, Camille says, another one to have a go at later, supposed to be prepping for my Christmas cards. Ugh. I know, it's nearly September, how on earth? Um, Jane, um, oh, I was replying to a few others, and morning or late this morning, uh, with the kit, will the colours be shown on the link? Uh, you should have them. There's three different colours actually in the um, sets. So you've got your pink crystal uh, powder, baby pink um, crystal with the beautiful uh, pink cord. You've got this one, did Kitty say what it was called? I think it's like a half-coated, Crystal AB? Um, no, I'm not sure. I'll have a look in a minute. Um, with your half coat AB, um, you'll get your lovely cream. And then we have the silver, which comes with the silver cord as well. So the two of those look beautiful for evening wear. Nice little grey jumper or grey blouse. Uh, they look gorgeous with. Okay, so hopefully you have the gist of the pattern. Super simple, pattern, repeat. Now I'm gonna show you how to finish off the ends. Now I know I said I was gonna show you the whole thing in its entirety today, but having said that, I, do, I worry, because I don't wanna bore you all just showing you the same thing over and over again. Um, because it is just a pattern repeat. It's super simple and you, you can see how quickly it comes together. We'll do a couple more and then I'll show you how to finish off the ends. Now, there are two different ways that you can finish it. We're going to do a sliding clasp. So just like you've seen me do with our normal macrame bracelets when we've done these in some of our other uh, tutorials. We had a really nice one. Uh, what was the last macrame one we did? Crystal Rondelles. Absolutely love that bracelet. Um, and there was a lovely lady tagged us on Instagram as well who had made who had made one with the kits, absolutely beautiful. We do love seeing uh, what you make from our tutorials. So the last one we did was with the Crystal Rondell Spacer Beads. They were absolutely gorgeous. Um, oh, Margaret saying, we never get bored. Thank you. <laughs> Diane says, not boring as Sarah. Oh, good. Okay, let's just do the whole thing then. You're all so nice. Okay, um, I've only got a few more beads to do and I'll just wrap it on to you. So it'll go quite quick. Um, 
yes so the last one we did was with the the crystal rondelle beads if you haven't seen that go and check it out they're absolutely gorgeous uh rose gold silver and gold we have in the sets um, and they are beautiful for evening wear. The great thing with macrame as well is that it's one size fits all. So if you are thinking, Camille's already thinking about her Christmas cards. If you're thinking about some Christmas gifts this year, we've all had a bit of extra time. So wouldn't it be lovely to make everything uh, to be able to gift people? And with sets like these, now you're going to make a whole bracelet out of just one strand. So if you're going for something like uh, the bundle, um, the bigger bundle where of course you're getting 10 strands of your crystals then you're going to be making 10 bracelets it's amazing value for money uh, remember that you're you've got 10 meters in your hank as well so plenty plenty to be making with um, but these are great because they're one size fits all because of this clasp that we do it also means if any of you are um super allergic to metal so if you have hypersensitive skin or perhaps um, we've had a few ladies recently saying that their jewellery is tarnishing very quickly when they're wearing it. A lot of the time that can be down to creams, perfumes, you know, um, taking care of them whilst washing and, and all this sort of thing, washing our hands. Um, obviously, antifac is incredibly strong, all the alcohol content. So um, you might find that things are tarnishing, but also it depends on things like medication as well. Over the years, I've had lots of people say um, that the tablets that they're taking or, or um, medicine, uh, medication that they're on actually um, makes their sweat tarnish their jewellery very, very easily. So with these, you've got no metal components. So if anyone is hypersensitive, you suffer with any of those issues, this is great because it is just beads and cord. Oh, naughty beads. Um, just beads and cord so it's going to be super comfortable to wear great if you are in the sun because you don't have to worry about sweat corroding any of that materials I know it's a bit gross isn't it not very glamorous but hey ho we all sweat it's natural um, we just don't want it to ruin our jewelry um, Dorothy says, morning all, just a quick pop in whilst waiting to see, uh, to be seen at the GP. Oh, Dorothy, hope you're okay. Well done getting in. Um, Charlotte's Web, yes, this is also known as Charlotte's Web. Yes, um, Charlotte's Web macrame. Um, and it's going to give you that lovely triple strand and you get this lovely web detail in the middle. Now I'm running out of space. Just got a few more to do. I tell you what, let's finish it on this bead. We'll make this one a little bit smaller. Okay, so once we get to the end, there is my half knot as usual, okay? And now we're going to do our six knots just like we did at the beginning because we're going to... Um, oh, Diane says 24 karat gold turns black on me at times. Absolutely, you know, sometimes I don't think there's any rhyme or reason for it. I don't, I'm not sure we'll always get to the bottom of it. I actually... <laughs> Carol says, horses sweat... Men perspire and ladies glow. <laughs> I absolutely love that. Um, yeah, my um, my skin, I, I tend to put like fake tan on my arms sometimes. It's just a moisturising one, you know, like the Dove, the Dove ones. Um, Moisturiser with a hint of, uh, of um, fake tan in it. And the minute I put jewellery on, uh, that makes it all go awful. Uh, looks like honeycomb. Yeah, it does. Um, what can we clean the tarnish off with? So you can actually, depending on what material it actually is, you can get some of the um, cleaning cloths. A lot of the time, um, depending on what metals they actually are, you can use bicarb and things like that as well. Um, but I would stick to the jewellery cleaner if you're not too sure on what it is. <laughs> Sue says, I'm definitely a horse. In the very hot weather, Carol. Sue, you're glowing. That's all it is. You're glowing. Um, okay, so I'm going to finish this off. We want to balance the top. So we had six knots up at the top. So we're going to do six at the bottom. And do you remember, our cords are in the middle now, so we need to go to the outside. So underneath the left with my left cord and underneath the right with my right cord. And that is going to position me back on the outside, ready for our six knots. So back to normal. Now, because I've got these separated out, I'm just going to take off some of these extra beads that we won't bother using for now. Let's get these off. 
and I'm going to bring all three of my spine cords back together like that way um, so that I can just get a little bit of a neater tighter finish on my final knobs let's bring this in okay so now I've done my half knot so we'll do on the right hand side so that's going to give me my two and we'll do six just so it's balanced like it was up at the top I'm sorry I know I'm just about nearly out of camera but you can see what I'm doing just with these last ones let's see if I can nudge it up ever so slightly there we go um, so one, two and a half, so that's my three. Uh, plain white toothpaste is amazing for cleaning, amazing for cleaning silver. Thank you, Amanda. Um, I'm a redhead and I'm glowing. Glowing red, <laughs> lovely sunshine here in Yorkshire. You know, it looks quite nice here today. I haven't yet been out. I've put, I've put a few things back in the garage, taking the washing out to the tumble dryer that's out there. Um, and it did feel very warm. Our house is so cool inside. It's so well insulated. Um, uh, very often I'm in the living room and I'll have like my fluffy socks on. Um, sometimes I even sit there with a water bottle. And as soon as I get up and go outside, I can't believe the temperature. One, two, three, four, five. So it does manage to stay nice and cool in here which is nice. I'm going to take, uh, well, providing it's not too hot. We had a lovely hour long walk yesterday. Five, six. Um, and just as I came home and shut the door, the heavens opened. It was so lucky. I, normally I check the weather before I go, but I didn't yesterday, but we had a lovely walk through the fields. It was really gorgeous. Um, so it was nice to be home with him. Okay, there we go. There is our lovely bracelet. Now then to finish off, there's a couple of different ways that we can finish and I'm just looking for my clear nail polish. Hang on one sec. I've got this naughty habit of sitting on my feet um, when I'm working and I shouldn't because I've got really bad knees. Um, it means when I then go to stand up, nothing works. Okay, um, so gorgeous bracelet, absolutely lovely. This is um, not even one strand of beads. So uh, you can see it's going to fit me really nicely. We'll fill in about an inch or so uh, with these. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So we'll be 13 on either side, left and right, 14 through the middle. Um, but with my strand of beads that I was using, I've still got all of these as well as the extras that I took off that we didn't end up using. So um, you'll be able to make probably, I would say, up to a good eight and a half inch bracelets. Um, just using one strand, which I think is brilliant. Um, it's Sarah's size then. Yes, Natalie, it is. <laughs> I'm so I'm so lucky. I mean, I, I don't like my wrists much. They're teeny tiny, feeble little things. But it does mean I get great value for money out of uh, lengths of beads and cords. Okay, so finishing. You can do it in two different ways. You can either keep all three of these cords, put a nice little bead on the bottom and have it as decorative, or you can do like a tradi more traditional style and we can get rid of these two outer cords and just have the one center spine. Now, I prefer the one center spine because it gives this little air of mystery around the uh, bracelet and how you've actually got all of those cords on the inside. So what I'm gonna do is just take some of my clear nail polish and I'm gonna put these around the edges. Now you can see it's slightly changing the color of it. Um, I am putting quite a lot on just because I want it to be nice and secure. What you can always do is just take your polish and run it up the middle and you're almost kind of blending in that color change and then it won't be so visible. So we'll do that on the top and on the bottom. With darker colours, it's very obvious. With darker colours, I would use something like a Hypo Cement, a GS Hypo Cement, um, which has that beautiful, fine, precision nip, nib tip to it. Not very easy to say. Um, or, of course, you can use things like your E6000. You could use any of your glues. It really doesn't matter. Just get it to hold in place. Whatever medium you prefer working in is absolutely fine. Um, 
waiting for delivery of the rat ale pack. Guess what I'll be making when it gets here? Oh, Sue, you're really going to enjoy that. Um, hopefully, um, nice, clear instructions for you to follow today as well. So, keeping that centre, I'm going to cut off this extra ones on the outside. I've got my big, ugly scissors today. Big, ugly, crafty scissors. Um, do excuse them. Um, because I've been away, most of my stuff is actually still in the car. I haven't even completely unpacked yet. Um, we had our, uh, our kitchen done last week, as you know, because it was super noisy. Um, I'm sorry about that. Um, but uh, so when I got home, I was really late getting home Saturday night. Um, left Kitty at about five o'clock, I think it must have been. Um, and I had to go um, and meet my husband to pick up the dog from him because he had um, he had Earl at work for me as well as Django. So I took Earl home, um, met him, had some dinner at the services in the car park. Very glamorous car park date. Um, I don't think I got home till about half, pa half past ten, I think it was. So yeah, yesterday I was packing everything back up into the kitchen, getting all of that sorted, pottering around, cleaning up. So I haven't even got all my stuff out of the car yet. Okay, so broken this down so that we now have um, nice ends. I'll get rid of that little fluffy bit um, and then we can make our bracelet. So to make our bracelet, we're going to wrap this over, bring back in the trusty box. Now I always use um, the edges to do my clasp. So I'll just put um, a little bit of tape back on here. Use the bits that I've just taken off. So you're folding both of these strands over each other, popping this onto the side. And again, you can use your macrame boxes up into the corner of your macrame boxes. This will hold it in place. Um, no problem. You just want to be able to access that double center spine. So this is going to be our sliding clasp. A little bit long, uh, short on this side, but that will do. And then you just take one of your little off, -cuts, off cut bits so um, one of the little bits that I cut uh, from one of my other um, sections and then you can use your cut off cord and again in half find that center section down in the middle and then we'll just do our knots as normal so you're taking left over the middle underneath up into that circle try to keep it in the center so you've got um, even amounts of cord on either side and don't pull this too, too tightly. Tightly enough to hold it into place, but loose enough that those center cords are going to run through each other. You want that sliding mechanism. You want them to just glide through these knots with ease so that you can put them on and off simply. And this is why it's one size fits all because there's no end of the bracelet. You can make the cord through the center as big as you want. So then, something that is Sarah size will also fit for example my mum my mum unfortunately has really bad arthritis so her her hands are so swollen but her wrists aren't too bad so putting bracelets on she needs them to be a little bit bigger but if she has bad days her wrists um will get really swollen so having something that is adjustable for those occasions you know for those for those days when you just need something a bit more comfortable a little bit adjustable um, and that is going to give you the comfort to be able to wear it. So we won't bother doing too much of this. I know I need more of a clasp, but we'll just leave it here for now because I can then show you the end result. So once you've done this, the right amount of knots to cover those little gaps in the bracelet, take it off the box. And then before you glue anything, just make sure, I'm gonna use a pair of pliers because my hands aren't very strong today. There we go. Unfortunately, I think I've got all that arthritis heading my way. And every now and again, if I've been making a lot, I get really sore hands. Um, so I just gotta sometimes use my tools as my extension to my hands. There we go, so that's gonna slide through. So again, we will put a little bit of glue on the outside edges, or your nail polish, whatever you prefer using, it's totally up to you. And here, because I don't want it to go into the middle, I don't want it to go into that center spine, I'm just gonna put a little bit on the outside edge because if it goes into the center and absorbs into those two spines running through the middle, my clasp won't slide. 
So you don't want it to go into the middle. What I would do is allow that to dry. When I think it's just getting tacky, I'll just slide these through again, just to make sure that they're not gonna glue into place. And then you can finish off by adding some of your leftover beads down onto the bottom of your cords. So onto the base, and then you can just tie a little knot. Let's leave that a bit longer to there. So this is the length, this is almost like your extender chain, because when you pull this clasp out, it will go to the end of your cords. And that's why it's really nice to have your bead as a stopper there. Once this is dry, I think that's probably enough. Always make sure you're cutting the right cords as well. <laughs> and then you can pull that through. Oh, look, one of my knots has come undone. So the glue just hasn't quite taken on that last knot. So that last one's come undone, but I can feel it's really nice and thick there. So it'll be lopsided by one, but that's okay. I can cut them off. You just need to make sure you put enough of your glue on and then you'll be able to pull that through it's going to give you a nice tight bracelet and then open that up and it will open all the way to the end of your bead and there you go you've got your gorgeous bracelet so remember there's three colors in the sets that we put together the color options that i chose so you've got a pink your um ab finish and also your silver I'm afraid I didn't get a chance to make one in that one, but I do wear quite a lot of grey, so I think I'll uh, I'll make that one next. Um, so your sets for under ten, uh, it might be ten pound fifty actually, for just over ten pounds, you're going to be able to make six of these bracelets, which I think is great value for money. Plus you'll have beads left over, plus you'll have lots of cord left over. There are um, 10 metres in each one of those hanks of which you are getting three. Um, so you'll have all of that left over and of course we've got the big, big crystal bundles as well. Um, really hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I'm going to be with you tomorrow as well. I will see you at 10 o'clock. I'm glad I've managed to get all the cameras set up. I think it looks great. Hopefully it's been alright for you guys as well. Um, and I will see you in the morning. Uh, Lucy says, such a lovely make. Thank you for, uh, so much for showing us and lovely tutorial you are more than welcome Camille as usual great tutorial thank you Sarah have a great day everyone thank you Camille Heather wonderful right back to work otherwise I won't be able to bead later get finished off quick <laughs> um, Diane says great tutorial thank you so much thank you enjoyed my time watching take care and lovely um Oh, and, and all well wishes for you all. Thank you. Um, Alicia, this is my last week of freedom. Then I start work next week. So no more watching live for me until half term. Oh, Alicia, you must be a teacher. I have appreciated these tutorials. My jewellery making has improved so much. Thank you, Sarah. You are more than welcome. Um, and good luck going back to work as well. I hope that is all okay for you. Um, Paula, that's very pretty. Thank you. Um, another fab demo. Take care and enjoy your day. Oh, thanks, guys. It's Monday today, isn't it? Yeah, happy Monday. Um, lots of work here for me to do. I've got TV shows this week and I'm also going to be doing the uh, Totally Beads uh, jewellery show next Wednesday uh, for Create and Craft TV as well. Um, so keep an eye out on all the social media. I'll make sure that we give you lots of sneak peeks and teasers. Um, thank you so much. I will see you all tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock, live as always. See you then, guys. Take care. Stay safe. Bye. I'm not finished, am I? I'm doing exactly what Kitty did. Press the button. <laughs>